You are listening to The Sexual Life. What is happening, guys? Welcome to episode 142 of the TSL podcast. And this is a podcast that's actually starting out a series of just awesome, awesome episodes all about sex. That means episode number 142, 43, 44, 45. They're going to be badass and you want to uh, subscribe to them and all that sort of stuff. This one is about, should I make out with a girl at the club? Now, this was a question asked on the Austin Men's Development Board, which is where you should be if you're a part of this whole thing. Uh, It was asked, it set off a whole chain reaction that actually, I mean, we get into this podcast about like, how do we have fast sex? How do we have sex in ways that benefit us, benefit the woman, we feel good about it without shame? So she actually feels that, you know, it was some of the best sex of her life, even though we've only talked to her for 20 minutes to four hours, like a short amount of time. That's what we're into. So if you want to get the liner notes on that, that describes everything, the sexual life.com slash one, four, two, that's the number one forty two. You can go there, you read all about it, read all the details that we break down here, but better than that, you can also download the instant connection course. And if you don't know where to find the Austin men's development, uh, Facebook group, you can get on there through that. All that stuff is free. So I'd encourage you to do it. Now, uh, let me just say, we're, we're going to get brazen with the TSL podcast again, as we were with Bang Radio, uh, which is what the early episodes were. Uh, man, I think there's such a great need for that in men's development. And we're going to start making the other podcasts that spin into stuff that's not so much about sex, because so much philosophy comes from it. We're going to start another podcast with that, so please support that. If you're listening on iTunes or Stitcher, subscribe on YouTube. If you're on YouTube, subscribe on iTunes and Stitcher, and go to thesexuallife.com slash 142 and download all the good stuff. Let's get into it. We're talking about one of my favorite things here, and that is SNL, Same Night Lays. So for all you pickup hardcore guys, that's what this is about. And before we get into this, I really want to preface it is that I don't care about dogma. I don't care about a specific right way, a wrong way. I'm just telling telling you how I learned, how I saw it happen, how it's proven to work, and those types of things. But you, can, however you have sex or get laid, do it. And you should be having sex. And that's fucking awesome. Like, that is really, really cool. So we had a question written in on the Austin Men's Development Board. You can go there and check it out. Uh, so I'm recording this. is December 31st, New Year's, New Year's Day, uh, Eve. And um, so it's right around that time. And it was like, should I make out with a girl at a bar? Or how do I make out with a girl at a bar and then pull her and, you know, get sexual. And this is a common question guys ask. I mean, it's so funny, like on a men's development uh, type podcast or whatever, this started out as as a podcast that talked about sex and social dynamics, but people are so afraid of talking about sex or it's like it, it trashes it. Yet when you get men together privately, they're always talking about this. And this guy wrote it in. Now it turned into this big dialogue and, and a lot of different stuff. And I want to talk about it. I said, I'd make a video about it because I want to share this perspective. Now, like I said, I don't care how you get sexual, how you get laid. If you follow whatever model, do it by all means, do it. I've taught it for many years. I've taught it with great success and uh, I've done it with great success. And it's just my thing. Now, also I've seen other people do it in many other ways with great success. And I've taught it and done it in those other ways with great success too. So it's, it's just a good thing. I just want you guys to be out there getting sexual and feel good about it, not feel that you have to be like ashamed or mask something or you need some, uh, you know, private group to talk about your sexuality. Of course, that helps sometimes. But but man, it's such an honor to be able to to be sexual as a man in all the different ways you can. That means in a relationship. That means in a fling. That means in where you're casually dating. And that means just hooking up with somebody. That's a part of sexual behavior, or those are all parts of sexual behavior that are well within the human experience and are just freaking great to experience. So I want you to experience those. So I said in this uh, in this thread, I said, man, look, actually, I'll, I'll tell you exactly what I said, uh, but it was really late when I wrote it. I said, man, it's late, late, late for me. I was in Hawaii when I wrote it. So I'll make this quick. But by the SNL PUA rules, it's better not to make out with somebody in the venue to maintain tension and make the move at their place or your place. But hey, I've done it uh, in the make out at the bar way and pulled many times. And so have many others. It's just easier not to and then pull. I'll make a video that explains all this. 
and uh, I'm a little bit backlogged on videos and so on. So a lot of people were like, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've done this and like totally made out with the mid bars and pulled them. And uh, I just wanted to clear it up to, to the guys that had said that. Now, first off, like they said here, like that's on the thread, any rule is meant to be broken. You know, when we get dogmatic in particular about things, it ruins them. It just totally shit cans them. Now, let me talk about the history of this rule just, just briefly. I wrote about it a lot in this post, but the term SNL did not exist until this guy, CJ, who was my mentor, coined it that. And the reason why, and it means something much different now, Maybe they don't use that term, but the reason why he did it was because way back when in pickup in 2005 or 2003 in those days, they said that that was a fool's mate, that th this was something you didn't want when you just hooked up with a girl beca because she wouldn't continue to talk to you afterwards. She didn't really like you. She wasn't persuaded by you. She wasn't invested in who you were as a person. And that's actually really a beautiful thing. So it was actually seen as, as weird as the old school pickup stuff was, like way back when, when Neil wrote the book, is just to hook up with somebody on the same night was seen bad, not because it was a bad thing, but because it meant that that only happened when the girl didn't really like you. That's pretty cool. That's really cool when you think about it. Now, I know it was totally distorted from that, but that's pretty cool. So when CJ came about all of this, he was like, well, I, I can make this happen. And they do like me. I'll talk to a girl for 20 minutes. I'll leave with her. And I've seen this happen multiple times or an hour. And he actually put it within 20 minutes to four hours. Or I think he just said within four hours. Anyway, whatever. But I've seen him do it in so many different ways. And I've done it in those ways where he's like, no, but they do continue to like me. And they want to date me afterwards. And they want to see me afterwards. Now, what SNLs became in pickup was like, let's just fuck drunk chicks. Like, that's easy. Totally different experience what CJ was going towards. Now, sometimes they were drunk. Um, it, you know, those things happened. But it, it meant that they enjoyed. That was the pivotal thing is that it was a fast hookup. People got sexual quick and they enjoyed being with you and would continue to date you regardless of the sex. So sometimes the sex would be bad. That's also an interesting thing. And they made that choice and that connection to be with you. Very, 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 very important. That was huge. And that is a, a skill that I don't see a lot of people doing. Now, that all being said, when CJ was doing this, when I was learning from him and I started out doing this, I had SNLs before I had any other sexual. Well, I had one sexual experience. It wasn't that. And when I first started in this whole thing, um, when we were doing this, we didn't st stick by these rules like madmen. We did whatever worked and then formulated the best possible generality for people to learn from. And that's what this is, okay? So when we made these rules, and these rules were partially made by me, it's a huge part of it. When we made them, it wasn't because we wanted the rules to work. We wanted to do what worked for ourselves, which was to have sex fast with women who were attracted to and still liked us afterwards, women that we could potentially have relationships with afterwards, and all those different things. We wanted to take what worked and make a game plan for guys to be able to follow and have consistency. So by all means, I don't care if you break the rules, make things work for yourself. So what's super important about all of this is why we don't get sexual in a bar or a club situation uh, when we meet somebody is because it kills the tension. Now, when we talk about sexual tension, sexual tension is what is the biggest driver. It's, it's your biggest advantage. It's that feeling that she feels in her body of where she wants to have sex with you, where she wants to hook up with you, uh, where it, it, it's going to be your biggest aid in escalation. And it's all those things saying like, oh my God, man, I want this guy. I want to have sex with this guy. I keep wanting to be this guy with this guy. I want to, you know, like I could put myself in a situation where we'd be alone. Like, I mean, I don't want him to take advantage of me, but if something did happen, it was good. I'd want it to be there. That's, that's that tension. That's that thing driving her, which is so key. And to, in order to manage that tension, you can't press on the gas too much. You have to press on it just right and let it off at the times so that we can manage that tension. Now, here are the things which kill that tension, okay? One of the things that kills that tension is safety. If she is unsafe, that tension will go away. So if danger is in play with you and her in that situation, kill it. If her friends judge her and see her, kill it, all right? If she thinks you don't respect her, that will kill it. If she thinks that you do this to everybody, that will kill it. If she thinks that you don't see her as an individual, that will kill it. If she thinks in some way, shape, or form you're going to gossip about her, 
that will kill it. If she thinks it will inhibit her reputation, that will kill it. If she thinks that she is acting like a slut again or does this too much, that will kill it. So self-judgment. So that's interesting. Those things will kill that tension very quickly. All right. Now, like I said, like I said, I've broken this rule many times, but just for people starting out, this can be hard to do because, you know, when you're with a girl and things start to get sexual, you're in a bar and, and you feel that tension, you want to kiss her, you want to do the next step. You're going to do that a couple of times just as a new dude because you've never done it. But after a while and you've been to the end zone a few times, you've gotten laid a couple of times, you got some of those under your belt, stop doing it and see how much better things will get. Now, I actually did learn this way, but you know, my mentor was really good and I could just see him like I, it was crazy. I'd go to a bar and I'm in all this pickup stuff. And then you just see this guy walk up to a girl casually and talk to her for like five minutes and she laughs and giggles. And then he stops talking to her. It's 10 PM. And then at one he is like, Hey, let's go. And she leaves with him. You're like, this guy talked to this girl for five minutes, let three hours pass between him. And then just said, let's go. And she left like, what the fuck? This fuck? And he didn't know where this is crazy. And I would just be, I'd see that over and over again. So I listened to what he said, right? Now, here's the thing is those things all kill tension. So when you do a sex act in a bar that other people can see and she can self-judge herself, her friends can judge her, she can feel unsafe, she can feel, and let's actually cut out the safety thing because that's, that's, that's not as directly relevant here. Um, but she thinks that maybe you do this to everybody, that she thinks that maybe she got carried away. Man, that can kill the tension. Now, let's say you want to kiss her and maybe even you bring it up, but don't kiss her. That builds the tension. So here's all these steps that happen in an SNL when you're meeting somebody at the bar of, of why this can be so good to go this route and infinitely better. And as I talk about this, I always think, why would you ever make out with a chick at a bar then? And, and, but I've done it, you know, I've done it, you know, and, and, but it just causes so many problems that kills that tension. So here's some key points that that tension needs to be there propelling, propelling, propelling. And you have to have all that logistic game and, you know, whatever. And, you know, some sort of, uh, uh, you got to have a little bit of a game plan, but it's way easier when you have that tension propelling you. Here's the first one, staying with her at the club. So let's say you're at the club, bar, wherever you meet her. You're going to have to have her wanting to be with you, always wanting to be with you, going like, oh my God, well, what would it be like to maybe kiss this guy? Oh, I don't want to do that. Or he's not right for me. Or he's too short. He's too tall. He's whatever, blah, 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 blah. But I kind of like being around him. That's staying with you at the bar. That's pivotal. Why does she have to stay with you at the bar? She doesn't really have to, but she does have to be there. You do have to be around her towards the end of the night when she does leave. That is important. Number one thing of SNLs that is, is just so impaired, and of course, people break this rule, but people break this, like, this is a little bit more important than the kiss thing, is you have to leave with her. You have to be in the same vehicles or you have to be in the same car, her car, your car, same cab, but you have to leave together. If you're following her, your chances die down big time. Why? Because there's so much shame in a woman it's like, oh my God, I left a bar with this guy and you're both driving separate cars. That's a lot of time. That's a 20 minute drive. That's a five minute drive, whatever it is, going to another venue uh, to to go like, well, wait a minute. Uh, oh God, I can't be doing this. Uh, what are my friends going to think? And all these different things that are going to run through her head. You want to be in the same vehicle. Well, that tension, if you kill that tension, if she has any reason to kill that tension, dude, you're, you, you've kind of screwed yourself. You won't leave the venue with her. Okay, you won't be around her in the venue to leave with her. So you got to walk outside the venue. Okay, that's that's a big move, but easy to do when you have the tension. Hard to do when you don't. There's a lot of talking into and all this other shit that comes into play. And this is why all the guys that play another game where they do make out and get all physical have to always be stimulating, stimulating, stimulating. When we did SNLs, we did not stimulate. It was the easiest thing. It was like, man, well, you want to give me a ride to my car? You want to go get something to eat? Uh, let's stop by my place first. That, that was casually how it is. Oh, well, I don't know. I got to talk to my friend. Well, I mean, you can call your friend, but let's just stop by here. I mean, it was that simple how we did it. There was no like, oh my God, oh, wait a minute. I left something in your apartment when I see other people's doing and all this over the top shit of where they have to do to, to get women to leave with them. Now, the next thing is, is you have to end up in that same vehicle with them. Okay. So how does that happen? And again, super important move. If you don't have that tension, hard to do. If you've killed the tension, Hard to do, okay? Now, the next thing is, is then you gotta go into her place or your place and you you can't go your separate ways. That's a point of tension. 
easy to do when you have the sexual tension behind you, hard to do when, you know, you don't. Okay. And so what that is, is when it's like, Hey, come into my place. And let's just, I don't know, let, let's not let, let this night get over, you know, get, <laughs> I just fucked that up. But we'd always say like, I don't want the night to end, you know, or let's go into my place and just watch some TV for a bit. I'll give you a ride home later. I got to sober up or whatever it is. Right. So very, very easy to do when you have that tension. Very. I mean, that's all you have to do to say it. It doesn't take much talking into. Right. Maybe she might give some resistance and go, well, look, I don't know. I don't like doing this. It's like, man, just just relax. Like, it's all good. You can do it or not do it. And it's that easy. It's that easy. Here's the other thing is that I can't tell you how many times I've pulled with another guy who's trying to pull that girl. And he somehow gets in or usually it's they leave together and I end up in their same car. And he fucks it up. Why? Because he kills the tension and I am mellow. And I just remember hearing about it so many times from uh, CJ and then implementing myself. He's like, man, I've played tug of war so many times and I know how to win it. This is how you win it. They'd be like, oh, well, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Da, 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 da. And I did this with another pickup guy quite recently. I, I didn't have sex with him because yeah, I'm in a relationship and so on. But it was just like, yeah, well, cool. I mean, we can do whatever, but I kind of want to stay with you. I mean, man, why are you, why are you? Going on, it's like, we're just trying to have a good time here. Like, well, you want to do this? It, very easy to passively go through it when you've built sexual tension, even though it's shared between two people and the other guy is popping his own by pressing too hard. We'll get into that a little bit later. Now, the next point of tension that you don't want to kill is then when you enter into the house. You enter in the house, you're going to have to get sexual for the first time. You want to get sexual for the first time to completion rather than a second time where you got sexual at a bar, which is a totally different experience. You're caught away in the moment. You listen to whatever music. You're all into it. You make out. You're going, oh, yeah, yeah. But then you stop and you act like normal people. And then you're like, oh, my God, I just like hooked up with this dude or she's going, I just took up with this dude in this bar. Like, what the fuck's going on? Okay, why did I do that? I kind of like him. It's kind of cool. Da, 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 da. Uh, and then you enter into your her house and there's this awkward moment of getting sexual again and you know you want to do it and and you can very easily do it and it's not a bad place but she has now thought for an hour or however long it's been since you made that make out two hours or or whatever it is all the different things that she's going to say to you about why she shouldn't do it and she's built up this argument in her head or with her friends off to the side because anytime you pull a girl right before you do it that like 2 a.m spot she's going to meet with your friends for like I don't know, 20 seconds before you should count on that. So so, so back in the club, she's going to do that shit. Just remember that. Let it happen. Don't fight it. Don't kill the tension. So anyway, the the thing is, is that, uh, you know, she's already thought of that argument. You don't want to have that. Why? Why would you give that? Why would you do that? Like, why would you do this? Why would you do something in a club? I get why you did it because you're like, oh, I was in the moment. I wanted to kiss her. It's an achievement in the PUA world or whatever it is. But but really knowing it, why would you do that if you didn't have to? And, and we could talk about I'll make a separate video about the things that you could say uh, to, to build that tension and to get the SNL to happen. But then there's the normal resistance. What happens when you do make the move and you start kissing her and where she's going to say stop, which is inevitable. Okay. That's going to happen nine out of 10 times. So sometimes it doesn't happen. You know, one out of 10 times is, is actually a lot, you know, 10% of the time, but 90% is more that it's going to happen where she's going to stop after you start making out with her and she's going to put on the brakes. Okay. Again, if she's already thought of that argument in her head, you fucked yourself. So what's going to give her that argument? The sex acts, the public sex acts, things that her friends will see. Now, mind you, you can do this. And this is a game plan. You're, you're getting off with her at the, at the club and everything's going along. You sense that sexual tension and you go off in a corner where nobody can see. And you say, I want to tell you a secret. I just wanted to kiss you. Let me have this kiss. Da, 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 da. And you kiss and you come back out and her friends don't know what happened. That's different. Okay. That's much different. And you can do that. But again, you don't even need to do that. And, and I would even say it's a better plan not to. So when you kiss her, here's some of the things her friends see, other people see, she thinks other people see. Now, if you're again in a secret moment, she knows nobody else saw, but she thinks other people saw. She thinks that you do this to everybody. It was too easy. She gave her sexuality away to you so easily that you think that you can do this to everybody. You don't even know anything individual about her. You're not doing this to her specifically. She's running through all those thoughts right then and there, rather than the thoughts of the sexual tension going like, oh my God, man, this guy is cool. Like, fuck, I like him, but oh, I don't. Uh, Man, he just thinks he could do this to anybody. But wait a minute, he hasn't done anything to me. That's building sexual tension. If you do any sex act that's public, that will happen. Okay, so here are some sex acts that you can do. And again, I'll get into this in a 
Another video, getting closer, pulling by the waist and hips, getting her hips and legs to touch your legs, getting her legs in between your legs, getting your bellies to touch. These are all things that are going to trigger sexuality in a bigger way than a makeout because they're going to hit more psychologically. They're going to hit more in the body and they're going to set somebody in a, in a totally different place. And I'll even go into this a little bit here on this video. Think about this next time you kiss a girl. When you kiss a girl in a club, get that feeling. Think about that. Think about the feeling that you have, have happen. You get that kiss in a club and she starts to kiss you. She starts to make out with you and she gets into it. And then all of a sudden it propels and moves into the energy of the club. And it's like, oh my God, okay, we got to stop because this is fun. Now check this out. And I can't tell you how many times this has happened. I'm alone with a girl and I'll actually say this because it, it, this happens a lot in a group sex situation. Let's say everybody's having sex. I'm the new guy with this girl that I haven't met. She doesn't know me. She feels weird about it because she just got started in the whole situation. Now, maybe you guys haven't been in the situation, but this is the first thing that came to my head. The first thing I'll do is kiss her. I will kiss her because now we're in a sexual environment. Either we have privacy or there's other people there doing it. I've done a lot of crazy shit, guys, so this is my life. But you could do this in a private setting. It's just the first thing that came to my mind. And I remember I, I kissed this girl. I've done this so many times in it. Because the setting allows for things to be sexual and it's not fun and there's no judgment surrounded by it, that's when she melts. So in that environment of being alone or one that's sexually favorable, a kiss means so much. It will totally allow sex to happen. And then your natural resistances will start to come into play of like, wait, I don't know, hold on. And there's ways to deal with that. Look at six points of escalation. There's tons of videos about that shit. But now, what are the situations in a public setting that allow that sex to happen? That allow that feeling for her body to come out that doesn't get retranslated into fun and gets translated into intimacy. Man, get close. Get your cheek next to her cheek. Tell a secret. Like if this microphone's her face, I'm going to go. And her lips are right here. So I'm going to be just off to the side like I'm telling a secret. If you're listening on audio, sorry. And I'm just going to say like, man, I got to tell you a secret. And then you can say whatever. You can say your nose wiggles when you talk. You can say something stupid. But because you're in that physical mode, the bodies are going to feel that's going to build the tension. And there's no reason for that tension to pop. Okay. Now, another thing might be uh, you get your bellies to touch. Huge one. If you can get your bare bellies to touch. I don't know why this happens. There's all this like evolutionary theory behind it. But man, look at a girl's eyes when you do that. You'll, they will like glaze over. Another thing is, is control by the waist, pull by the waist, pull by the hips, get your hips and get your lower bodies to touch your upper bodies. Or, I'm sorry, get your lower bodies to touch her lower body and have that communicate. Get her legs in between your legs. Get her to step towards you in your center line. All those things are going to be huge, man. All that touching, you could be aggressive touching or assertive touching or whatever you want to call it. It could be soft touching. It could be grabbing. But all those things are things that don't pass judgment. Those are all things that you're going to have in a club. Even if I get really crazy and grab a girl by her belt, grab a girl by her belt and pull her to me. You know, it's aggressive, man. She's, oh, she, she freaks out at first. And then all of a sudden you'll watch her within a second. She'll go oh, and glaze over. That's all that I want, right? And you don't need to do that. But if I were to do that, she doesn't go, oh my God, did my friend see me do that? Da, 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 as she would with a kiss. It wouldn't kill the tension. It would build the tension. So these are much more important things to do uh, when you're at a venue or at a club rather than go for the things that, that seem like they'd be the sexual thing. Now, I mean, look, like I said, I've broken this rule so many times. Um, the best way to break it is in private. That's awesome. Um, logistics and polling in an SNL, very, very different. Um, what SNLs are about, and I'll get into that in the next video. So uh, you can look for that podcast when it's in the feed. But um, the, what they're really about is the ability to get sexual. That, that, like people say logistics are number one. It's a toss up. Logistics and the ability to get sexual are the two most important things that are very different. And we'll talk about that in the next one because that is super important. Sexual escalation, getting sexual, getting the situation and making those things happen. Fucking massive. All right. So do whatever you want. But if you're a sexually experienced guy, definitely try not making out at the club and killing that tension. You'll feel weird about it at first, but just try it. Force yourself to do it a couple times and get, get to the pole. Get to where you actually close in it. And you'll see how much easier it is. And I guarantee you'll be sold on it. It's just, 
It's awesome. It's so easy. It will, it will make everything go from like all this work that you've done in the club to more like just 20 minutes of talking. It's, it's super easy. There's plenty of posts on this at The Sexual Life. Uh, you can look for it. Uh, if Captain Jack still has a blog, it goes on and off. And he's, he's kind of a weird guy. I mean, I talk about him really well, but there's a lot of things that I'm quite critical about him as well. Um, so it's not a lot of hero worship. Like the, what I saw with that guy was like legitimately some awesome stuff and allowed me to change many things about my life and then teach so many other people how to do it. So hopefully that advice helps you out. Uh, definitely give feedback on it. Post more questions on the AMD board if you're curious about it. And if you're not on the AMD board, you should be because it's free and it's pretty goddamn good. All right, later. And there we have it, number 142 in the books. Thank you so much for listening, watching, wherever you're at in the world. Email me, Steve at The Sexual Life, if you have any questions. I get back to all of you. You know I do. And better yet, the best thing that you can do to seriously get in contact with me or get help with anything with dating, sex, uh, weight loss, jujitsu, Wim Hof method stuff is if you go to the Austin Beds Development Board, it's free. And if you don't know where to go for that, go to thesexuallife.com slash 142. Get all the liner notes on this. Download the Instant Connection course. And of course, you can find the link for the AMD board, the Austin Men's Development Board. Let's do this, guys. It's an amazing thing. Sex is something that you should be proud of. You as a man is something you should be proud of, but let's do it in the right way where, man, we just build a good life around us. Talk to you guys soon, and uh, man, let's wait for the next one because it's all about sex.